You're listening to Force Fed Digital. BXU Heard. Buongiorno. Happy day, everyone. Benvenuto. Welcome to the Art of Bounce podcast. A connection between Force Fed Digital and TURN, the United Roman Networks. My name is Ralph Anthony Garcia, also known as R4. Bounce is the place where I do not hesitate singing of the unsung, the bouncers in your local nightclubs, the security guard working the shelter or job centers, bouncers on a party boat, wavy in more ways than one, the security guard working at schools dubbed school safety, just as adamant as the TSA workers of Newark, LaGuardia, and JFK, and every other international airport across the country, across the seven seas, seven continents, and all 195 countries. Peace to the protectors of all our communities. Through hell, high water, extreme weather, the coldest, the hottest, boredom and dramas, chaos, hoping to maintain that peace, prosperity, safety, and security. Today on this week's edition of Bounce, we're gonna get out our notebooks. Each bouncer or licensed security officer should have a study booklet with the basics and reference points you'd gather at any school you attend annually. Always keep a go-to notebook handy. As we get out those very books, we will jot down your rights when stopped by police. The tape I play is just a mere smidgen to a much wider arcade. You as a bouncer a legitimate licensed security officer should always collect. Also, do research such as criminal procedure law, a set of rules governing the series of proceedings through which the government enforces substantive criminal law. Municipalities, states, and the federal government each have their own criminal codes defining types of conduct that constitute crimes. In so many words, a lot to unpack here. And my fellow men and women in black, we should each have the sound enough mind to absorb this multitude of information. It's a lot. It's a damn lot. Fucking right it is. But here at Bounce, we are all going to learn together as we read from the pages of the American Civil Liberties Union discussing your rights when stopped by police. Let's listen in. All right, everybody, as I sat here thinking about what to do about the next episode of Bounce, I just had an inkling. I just had an epiphany. That's what it is. And this epiphany requires me to just do something positive with the internet for once. And let me look up your rights if stopped by police in America. Let's see. Mm Mm-hmm. Know your rights. When stopped by police, okay, the ACLU will provide a cornucopia of your rights when stopped by police. Know your rights. Let's go. Being stopped by police is a stressful experience that could go bad quickly. Here, we describe what the law requires and also offers strategies for handling police encounters. We want to be clear. The burden of de-escalation does not fall on private citizens. It falls on police offices. However, you cannot assume officers will behave in a way that protects your safety or that they will respect your rights even after you assert them. You may be able to reduce risk to yourself by staying calm and not exhibiting hostility toward the officers. 
the truth is that there are situations where people have done everything they could to put an officer at ease, yet still ended up injured or even killed. All right, let's go by scenarios. I've been stopped by the police in public. Your rights? You have the right to remain silent. For example, you do not have to answer any questions about where you are going, where you are traveling from, what you are doing, or where you live. If you wish to exercise your right to remain silent, say so out loud. In some states, you may be required to provide your name if asked to identify yourself, and an officer may arrest you for refusing to do so. You do not have to consent to a search of yourself or your belongings, but police may patch your clothing if they suspect a weapon. Note that refusing consent may not stop the officer from carrying out the search against your will, but making a timely objection before or during the search can help preserve your rights in any later legal proceeding. If you are arrested by police, you have the right to a government-appointed lawyer if you cannot afford one. You do not have to answer questions about where you were born, whether you are a U.S. citizen, or how you entered the country. In parentheses, separate rules apply at international borders and airports, as well as for individuals on certain non-immigrant visas, including tourists and business travelers. How to reduce risk to yourself. Stay calm. Don't run, resist, or obstruct the offices. Do not lie or give false documents. Keep your hands where the police can see them. What to do if you are arrested or detained? Say you wish to remain silent and ask for a lawyer immediately. Do not give any explanations or excuses. Don't say anything, don't sign anything, or make any decisions without a lawyer. If you have been arrested by police, you have the right to make a local phone call. The police cannot listen if you call a lawyer. They can and often do listen if you call anyone else. If you believe your rights were violated, write down everything you remember including officers' badges and patrol car numbers, which agency the officers were from, and any other details. Get contact information for witnesses. If you're injured, seek medical attention immediately and take photographs of your injuries. File a written complaint with the agency's Internal Affairs Division or Civilian Complaint Board. In most cases, you can file a complaint anonymously if you wish. What can you do if you think you're witnessing police abuse or brutality? Stand at a safe distance and, if possible, use your phone to record video of what is happening. As long as you do not interfere with what the officers are doing and do not stand close enough to obstruct their movements, you have the right to observe and record events that are plainly visible in public spaces. Do not try to hide the fact that you are recording. Police officers do not have a reasonable expectation of privacy when performing their jobs, but the people they are interacting with may have privacy rights that would require you to notify them of the recording. In many states, see here, you must affirmatively make people aware that you are recording them. Let's see, for example, the reporter's recording guide. The Reporter's Recording Guide provides a summary of each state's laws governing the recording of phone calls and in-person conversations and how those laws affect news gathering. Because many of these laws have criminal penalties, some also permit civil lawsuits. This guide should not take the place of legal advice from a lawyer. Journalists with additional questions or who need to find a lawyer can contact the Reporter's Committee legal hotline. If you're a new user of this guide, be sure to read the introduction of the reporter's recording guide. The introduction covers the type of state laws that restrict recording activities, consent requirements, criminal and civil penalties, restrictions adopted by the Federal Communications Commission that apply to broadcasters and other special circumstances. 
There's a whole smorgasbord of information here. Now, police officers may not confiscate or demand to view your photographs or videos without a warrant, and they may not delete your photographs or video under any circumstances. If an officer orders you to stop recording or orders you to hand over your phone, you should politely but firmly tell the officer that you do not consent to doing so and remind the officer that taking photographs or video is your right under the First Amendment. Be aware that some officers may arrest you for refusing to comply though their orders are illegal. The arrest will be unlawful, but you will need to weigh the personal risks of arrest, including the risk that officer may search you upon arrest, in parentheses, against the value of continuing to record. Whether or not you are able to record everything, make sure to write down everything you remember, including officer's badge and patrol car numbers, which agency the officers were from, how many officers were present, and what their names were. Any use of weapons, including less lethal weapons such as tasers or batons, and any injuries suffered by the person stopped. If you're able to speak to the person stopped by police after the police leave, they may find your contact information helpful in case they decide to file a complaint or pursue a lawsuit against the officers. The police are at my door your rights, and how to reduce risk to yourself. You should not invite the officer into your house. Talk with the officers through the door and ask them to show you identification. You do not have to let them in unless they can show you a warrant signed by a judicial officer that lists your address as a place to be searched or that has your name on it as the subject of an arrest warrant. Ask the officer to slip the warrant under the door or hold it up to the window so you can read it. A search warrant allows police to enter the address listed on the warrant, but officers can only search the areas and for the items listed. An arrest warrant has the name of the person to be arrested. Even if officers have a warrant, you have the right to remain silent. You should not answer questions or speak to the officers while they are in your house conducting their search. Stand silently and observe what they do, where they go, and what they take. Write down everything you observed as soon as you can. When your rights have been violated, write down everything you remember, including officers' badge and patrol car numbers, which agency the officers were from, and any other details. Get contact information for witnesses. File a written complaint with the agency's Eternal Affairs Division or Civilian Complaint Board. In most cases, you can file a complaint anonymously, if you wish. How to be a responsible bystander If you are a guest inside the house and end up answering the door, you should make clear to the police that you are a guest and do not have the authority to let them inside without the homeowner's permission. I've been arrested by the police. How to prepare for a possible arrest. Prepare yourself and your family in case you are arrested. Memorize the phone numbers of your family and your lawyer. Make emergency plans if you have children or take medication. Your rights. Say you wish to remain silent and ask for a lawyer immediately. Do not answer any questions or give any explanations or excuses. If you can't pay for a lawyer, you have the right to a free one. Don't say anything, sign anything, or make any decisions without a lawyer. You have the right to make a local phone call. The police cannot listen if you call a lawyer, but they can and often will listen to a call made to anyone else. How to reduce risk to yourself. Do not resist arrest, even if you believe the arrest is unfair. Follow the officer's commands. When your rights have been violated, write down everything you remember, including officer's badge and patrol car numbers, which agency the officers were from, and any other details. Get contact information for witnesses. File a written complaint 
with the agency's Internal Affairs Division or Civilian Complaint Board. In most cases, you can file a complaint anonymously if you wish. Now, pardon if I tend to repeat myself, but that's exactly how it is written here, so bear with me. Peace to the ACLU for having this very important and valuable information. So, once again, I hope you got some sort of knowledge out of this deal. You know, I hope you learned something. And those that might have already known their rights, this is just a refresher course. You feel what I'm saying? So, no harm in that whatsoever. And always know your rights. People are on the internet doing all kinds of ish. Why don't you do something positive for yourself and look up your rights? Right? Please be clear, my fellow men and women in black. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There is a lot of studying one must do. Don't just reference this episode and think it's all you need because it's not. It's merely a start of a path of learning. The security officer slash bouncer industry is nothing to f around with. I cannot stress enough how imperative it is to learn the law. The law should be the first thing you get down pat doing this gig and much more if you consider making a multiple decade career out of this. If, and that's a huge if, you might seriously want to consider other lines of work for the minimum wage they offer now. But if you're indeed fortunate enough to roll with a team that gives you proper pay multiple days in the week in good places, safe places, and preferably in close proximity to your fellow teammate in a spot somewhere close by, and licensed security officers can make a good career from this industry if you roll with the right team that will care enough for you to keep you on your toes as far as keeping your credentials in order, your ducks in a row, attending yearly eight-hour classes, and paying off the renewal of your license every two years. Not just in school, this should be a daily habit, especially on days you work. Study the law, quote unquote. See, us fellow men and women in black have to adopt a certain Jekyll and Hyde type personality in this game. Let me explain. Bouncers are badasses at heart. You understand me? But as licensed security officers, we must respect the law. We have to learn the law. Get to know the law till we are familiar with the law. That's it. No other way around it. Can't go to jail. And you don't want to do that, because if you do, you're going to have a problem renewing your license if that criminal case isn't dismissed. And even when you get it dismissed, it's an entire uphill battle from there. Stay on top of your shit, y'all. It's a fucking fucked up world out there. That's why I'm here. For you folks who want to connect with me. Go to www.solo.to forward slash RGMC 2407. My universal handle is at RGMC 2407. Facebook, IG, Threads, X, PayPal, Cash App, YouTube channel, Gmail. All of that is at RGMC 2407. Visit the Art of Bounce YouTube channel. Please subscribe over there or go here. Follow the podcast on ForceFed Digital, wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts, whether it's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Amazon Music. And you can join the United Ronin Network's YouTube channel to get the exclusive, uncut versions of the Auto Bounce podcast. So then, my friends, as we reach another end, I'd like to send a little bit of love to my kid. 
you deserve the praise as well as a raise. Let us proper for the rest of our days. Be safe. <laughs>